Now, Germany's chancellor joined other Western leaders in a phone call with Vladimir Zelensky on Sunday. Ukraine holds Independence Day events on Wednesday, and that also marks six months since the Russian invasion. Sergio Olmos tells us new bombardments in the same region as Ukraine's largest nuclear plant are deepening fears of a potential disaster. I'm just 30 miles from that nuclear plant, and this morning uh, there has been additional shelling overnight at, at the city just across the river from the nuclear power plant, uh, Nikopol. I've been there a few times myself. That's just, that city gets shelled every night. Last night we heard of 25 artillery shells cutting out electricity to 3,000 residents. As, as we know, uh, this is just across the river from the nuclear power plant. Ukraine is hesitant uh, to fire back. Uh, they say that if they were to strike at targets there, they might hit the nuclear power plant, so they, they don't do that. Uh, of course, we're just 30 miles away. If that nuclear power plant were to somehow be in danger, it would be everybody here who would immediately feel the effect. So Ukraine has been asking for that area to be demilitarized. They've been asking for international inspectors to be allowed in. And we heard over the weekend that Vladimir Putin had told Emmanuel Macron that indeed he would agree to allow international inspectors in, not agree to demilitarize them. I've talked to a couple plant workers now who used to work at the nuclear power plant until recently. Uh, they say that everybody there is very afraid and that people have started getting their families out, the workers there, uh, especially in, ahead of the start of the school year. I've talked to multiple families from Enojadar, the city where that nuclear power plant is located, who say that uh, education officials have started telling them, if you don't bring your kids to the schools, the Russian-backed schools, uh, the first time you miss, it's a, vi it's a warning. Second time, it's a violation, uh, a, a fine of 40,000 rubles. And the third time, you lose your parental rights. So the families of the workers have been starting coming in in droves, uh, evacuating to Zaporizhia here. And as we mentioned, Ukraine marks its Independence Day this Wednesday. Ukrainian President Zelensky is warning about a potential escalation from Russia. Tell us about that, Sergio. That's right. Uh, many people are very excited for, to mark Independence Day, and it will be the six-month mark of the war. Uh, there is already captured Russian tanks on the main street in Kyiv on Krishatik, and people are, you can see people taking selfies with them and people getting ready to celebrate it. At the same time, President Volodymyr Zelensky is asking people to heed the air raid sirens. And there has actually been an update to the air raid sirens because of the threat here at the nuclear power plant. The typical air raid siren sounds, you're supposed to go into a shelter, wait there until the old clear. The new air raid sirens include the different types of threats that Ukraine is now facing. For a chemical hazard, they're going to sound like church bells. For a radiation hazard, they're going to sound like alarm bells. And for an evacuation signal, it is now a train horn. Uh, of course, the air raid siren would have you stay in your basement. You don't want that with radiation. You want to get up and out and out of the area. You don't want to stay underground. Same thing for chemical. So Ukraine has had to adapt ahead of the Independence Day and because of what they call here the nuclear blackmail by Russia, uh, holding this power plant as a kind of military base and using it to shell uh, citizens just across the river here. Sergio Olmos in southern Ukraine.